Welcome back to NPR News. I'm Lucy Mitchell. Today we're joined with Bubby Bollocks from the Pisswassers. Thank you for joining me, Bubby. Thanks for having me. <laughs> So what are your thoughts on the formation of the band in the early days? How did you get involved? What are your thoughts on being in a band with your friends and brothers? Well, the idea came from Wilbur. Growing up, it was pretty obvious pretty early on that he was a musical genius and that um, he was going to you know, change the world in, in the way that he did. I picked up the drums when I was two and a half years old. You know, By, by the time I was five, I was playing with, the, um, with, with symphonies and... Um, on uh, in opera houses all over the world, you know. Once he he brought Wilbur brought home a tape when I was maybe f- thirteen or fourteen. He played it for me, and it was it was a tape he had made by himself. And I heard it, and I I was floored. I was completely floored, you know. So then I I urged him on to uh, let me be in a band with him and and really get the ball rolling. With, with this and at first you know he's kind of like the you know the younger brother um oh uh, you know that, that's lame to have your younger brother in uh in the in the band but um eventually i i got my drumming up to par and then he uh he he we we, we got going and then we got once pinty came in it was joined me and uh william wilbur it was it was it was just different from then on it was like okay this is something that's we're going to change music, you know, I think we, I think everybody realized that pretty early on. And then once we got the addition of, uh, there's only so much you can do with a three piece, you know, there's only so much sound you can make. And then once we got Teddy on guitar, it just totally rounded out the whole sound. And, uh, and from then on, it was just, it was awesome. A lot of critics have commented on your unique drumming style. Who were your influences? So, so pretty early on, I was influenced with, um, American jazz drummers, you know, Buddy Rich, that um, that kind of stuff. But then, uh, then I heard Led Zeppelin, the first Led Zeppelin record, and it was it awakened some awakened something in me that I don't think I would have ever found without them. And John Bonham, you know, a lot of people say he's the greatest drummer in the world, and I, you know, I wholeheartedly agree, wholeheartedly agree with that. So, like, example, like on uh, there was a fella. Um, that's our tribute to John Bonham, and I. Listen to Led, uh, Led Zeppelin, all the Led Zeppelin records, um, eighteen times through each one, and I picked my, out my favorite drum fills, and I um, I played them the best. I, I'll never play them as good as John, but um, it's a uh, you know I think a fitting tribute. Bon Jono. Once I was able to get myself together as a kit drummer, I, I try and infuse them together with the the feel and the precision of um, of Buddy Rich, but the power and energy of of John Bonham, and um, that's the best way I can des- uh, describe my my drumming so far. How would you describe your recording process on the most recent album? Were there any fun stories or happenings, or was it just an all around unique experience? Um, you know, we, we, we decided to get really, really down to, down to work with this one, you know, go to work. Let's get, let's, let's get this one right. Um, and we, we, we record a lot differently than a lot of other bands. We go into the studio, we don't have a producer and uh, well, until we decided it was probably better that we get one. (laughs) But as far as, um, recording the music physically there in the studio, we, we we've never had a uh, a recording engineer, which is different than a producer. A producer takes the songs, takes the 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 songs and the the master tapes, puts them together, mixes them up, gives it to the record label, and then it goes out. But a recording engineer is the guy in there miking up everything, and um, hitting record. You know, usually recording engineers have their uh, their kind of their signature 
what they do. You know, uh, Steve Albini from Chicago famously has worked with the Jesus Lizard and the Pixies and Nirvana. Um, he's famous for this really big drum sound. We don't believe in that. We think that's a load of garbage. We hate it. It makes my blood boil when I think of it. So we go in there and we put about 800 microphones in the room and then we just hit record. We have them all going to one channel. So I think that really sets our sound apart from everybody else. Most bands uh, are using maybe may- maybe 15 microphones when they mic up a live band in the studio to play, but we do about 800 to t- eight. 8 to 1200 microphones we hit record and then we don't listen to it and we send it to our producer just to capture the raw energy and feel of uh of the piss wassers so for this for this record what we decided to do we decided to get 3000 microphones all going to one tape just cuz when you're in that 1200 8 to 1200 microphone range it's you know you're getting everything but you're you're there's there's some energy that's lost you know so we decided originally we were going to do uh 2500 2500 2, microphones in one room but uh and we record in a room that's about the size of a broom closet so we decided but we after we, we did one take with about 2500 microphones And, uh, we, you know, it just, it wasn't there. So we decided maybe 3000 microphones. We did 3000 microphones this time around, which made it, um, which really captured a different feel and maybe a different side of the piss wassers. What a deeply unique process. You know, it's common for drummers like you to get endorsements from brands such as Tama. What is your experience with that? So I was, so my, me and my drum tech, well, my drum tech, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Oliver Cha uh, was approached by uh, Tama. They had seen me. I, I've, pl- I've played on a, t- on a Tama kit, the same Tama kit uh, my whole life up until the endorsement. And they saw I was playing one and they, they offered me one and um, it was really flattering. You know, we always expected this kind of success and we were just kind of waiting for things to get handed to us. So when that happened, I was about, you know, about time. It's a great kit. I have 50 of them. Um, one for each room in my house. Uh, the dimensions are exactly the same on all of them. I just like having a lot of drum kits because it makes me feel powerful. Uh, my, I, I, I play quite an unusual drum kit as well. You know, a lot of drummers play typically with um, normal sized drums. I have a 45 inch kick drum when the standard is about 22. Uh, I, I, I play with, uh, I, I, I also consider myself a unique drummer in the sense that um, I play a very minimalistic kit. I don't have, you know, a kit I can spin around and go, you know. I have two toms, I have a kick drum, a snare drum, two crashes, a ride cymbal, and a hi-hat. That's all I need to get the job done. Most uh, most drummers are playing 13-inch uh, um, rack toms, uh, the high tom. Um, I decided to go with a 25-inch rack tom and I decided to go with a 35-inch floor tom. My crew, you know, suggested that maybe I do smaller sizes because it's physically impossible to get some of the drums through the doors in the, ven- in the venue. But I told them to pound sand, and they were subsequently fired. But it is very flattering to have a company behind you. For sure. What are your thoughts on the current album about to drop in just less than a month? Be careful what you wish for. Do you have high hopes for this release? You know I do. I try and stay optimistic through all of the all of our releases. I think I don't, I don't put anything out that I can't get behind. There's a lot of bands nowadays that seem to be trying, you know, you'll hear, you'll hear a big band say, Oh, we're going to do something completely different. And then, you know, whatever it is, they just added, you know, it's, it's just not, you know, and and this one sounds like every single other Pisswasser album we've ever produced. We are not trying to be different. We want to give our fans what they like. This is what they know that they like. And we're not going to be one of those bands that goes, oh, we're going to be different, and then put out the worst sounding album you've ever heard. We're not about that. We've played, we've played stadiums. We've played countries. We've played, you know, we, we totally deserve the success that we get. And this, we, when, you, when, you're, when you're as successful as we are, you know, it's easy to get 
to to have the same feeling right, right when you're about to release a record. Oh, it's just another record, you know. Um, and this is just another record. Be careful what you wish for by the Piss Wassers will be released on November 8th out on all streaming platforms. Thank you for joining me, Bubby. Sure. I'm Lucy Mitchell from NPR News.